Welcome to another Retro Crazy. We're looking back at the Wonder Swan. The reason I'm having a look at the Wonder Swan is this is one I featured earlier in Sendico. Let me turn the volume down. And it had what looked like water damage, liquid damage round the side. So I took the screen out and then realised that the polarising film, hopefully I'll be able to pick that up, the polarising film had actually gone. Um, it had uh, peeled away and uh, you see that in the bottom, this, this bottom edge. It peeled away all the way around. So I removed it. And I remember seeing a number of videos regarding Game Boy and Game Boy polarising films and I thought, well, hold on. Surely, I could do the same trick here and uh, replace the damaged polarising film with a fresh one. The other thing I thought I'd look at is the Wonder Swan came out at the same time as the uh, the, the early uh, period of these uh, surface mount caps, which are very prone to go on things like Sega Game Gears and pretty much everything else in that period. And on the Game Gear, one of the things that can happen is you get a very, very dim screen. And that's, the camera is not really showing it very well because it's picking it up quite nicely. But that's what we're starting to get uh, on this um, and on this one. So seeing as there are only one, two, three capacitors. Why not see about replacing them? Let's let's see what it does. So a little bit of an adventure this one. Not sure where it'll go, but I've already got a Wonder Swan that I've stripped to have a look at. It's already got the screws out. So let me pop this one to the side, move some of the stuff out of the way, and let's start with the screen. So I've seen from other people doing videos on the Game Boy that trying to get the glue, the adhesive off can be a challenge, I think is a polite phrase. I've never done this. I've never done the Game Boy. So let's see just how much of a challenge it is. So this is just some 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. Cotton bud or Q-tip, depending on which country you're in. Let's see what happens. It really doesn't seem to want to remove the adhesive at all. It's not really dissolving it. You may not see it on camera, but I can clearly see the line. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. There you go. That really is not having much of an impact. I mean, it's, it's lifting some of it. You can see it balling up there, but that's pretty much where it's starting to dry and is catching on Q-tip. So they really were not joking when they said these were awkward. Yeah, not pleasant. Okay, let's see if we've got something else that will work. So I've got a couple of things to try. The old trusty knife, which just a craft knife with the blade removed, not the most safe thing in the world to, to use and a couple of pry tools which are plastic and uh, shouldn't damage the screen. A glass. So let's see how we get on.
So the difference is like night and day now that uh, most of the glue's off. However, what I did note is I was able to rub through at this point here. So it actually looks like there's a second layer of film on this, which is now damaged and therefore I will need to remove. So this could be even more interesting. As you can see, there is a second film, which is coming off slowly. So once that's off, we'll clean up the glue underneath. That's the last of the glue off. The screen is now crystal clear. So you'll be able to see from uh, the amount of glue that came off, just how bad it was. Next, is going to be taking the uh, polarization film and uh, working out which way is uh, the best. That's personally the most realistic colour, so I think I'll probably cut it that way. So that's next. So I'm using this as a guide and the colour's not bad. As we move this round, you can see it on screen varying. It varies much more when you're up close. I kind of like it there. And I'm going to try this technique to do it. I'm going to mark corners with a sharpie. And now I have four dots, which you can maybe see. And I'm just going to cut between the dots. So let's see how this works. So cutting between the dots. It's not too bad. It certainly seems to have worked. There are a number of ways you can do it, obviously for speed and ease. This is the way I chose to do it. So I'll move this one out of the way, and now I need to bring in the one with the missing screen. I'm going to gently lift the screen out of the way. No, I'm going to gently lift the motherboard out of the way. The screen's here. We can see that the, the film has to sit in there. 
Now it is actually slightly tacky around the edges, so it will hold in place. Make sure we get the right side. So we can remove the first film. Trying not to touch the film, obviously, because I don't want fingerprints on it. except it's now touched the inside and buckled slightly. Unfortunately, where it's touched, it's now made a mark, unfortunately, on the inside. Well, oh, lesson learned. Give this a good polish. There's a little mark, hopefully nothing too serious. So I've got a load of buttons I need to refit. And now let's drop the screen in. I'm not going to drop the circuit board in just yet because obviously we need to do the recapping. But let's have a look. It's nice and clear, nice and clean. That little mark is there, but it's so faint we should get away with it. So let's pop this to the side at the moment. And let's have a look here at the circuit board. I've got a pair of 330 UF caps, both apparently 6 volts and 100 uh, UF, and what looks to be about 4 volts. I've just got to work out which ones are which. So as normal, I'm just going to heat either side, break the solder, gently lift, heat the other side and the caps should lift off. And then I'll be able to just do a little bit of clean up and then drop the new caps in. New caps are smaller, but that's technology for you. Should still reach the respective points on the circuit board. I'm just going to run this at 350 degrees. We'll see you in a second after this is done.
Now that that's done, let's drop the board back in. Now I have to say, <laughs> that looks brand new. That looks absolutely stunning. When I do a comparison, the color is, is spot on. This, you're not, you, the camera may pick up the edges. In fact, I can see it's just picking up the edges even with the reflection. Around here, you can see the, the darker area in the center with the lighter and, uh, out in the, in the corners. Maybe not with the reflection there. Let me see if I can get it a bit better. Oh, there you go. Right. Now you can see, I can, I can clearly come around where this is. And if I do a comparison to that one, there's there's nothing. It's, it's pristine. But does it work? Well, we know this one, even though the battery is low, works. So... What does this one do? Does it work? Does it not? Was this a waste of time? Is it still a broken wonder swan? Let's find out. Wow. Good news and bad news. Good news is the screen came on. The bad news is I forgot to put the cartridge over as well. Let's try again. I can see an image. And there we go. That screen is gorgeous by comparison to what it used to be. Oh, and it's so much brighter. And that's the battery going flat. What perfect timing. Well, there you go. How to uh, bring back a wonder swan from beyond the, the grave. Well, as I'm recording this, this is technically still November. However, this video I'll pop out for Christmas. So this will be the, the, the Christmas video. I know my subscriber numbers are low. I'm a fairly new channel. I don't do much. However, would you like to win a Wonder Swan? Namely, the Wonder Swan that's uh, just been done. If you do, pop a yes please comment at the bottom of the video. And on the 1st of January, I will randomly select somebody to win this Wonder Swan. So there you go, you can't say fairer than that. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next Retro Crazy.